our friends from all over the world. Welcome to eMobility East Meets West, brought to you by MIH and Anchor Taiwan. A warm welcome and good morning from Taipei. Our event will start in about three minutes. In the meanwhile, grab your coffee or drink. We hope you are as excited as we are. See you in a few minutes. Everybody, this is Alisa Chiu. I am the founder and CEO of Anchor Taiwan, also the host and curator for the session today. Anchor Taiwan is a platform focusing on ecosystem building and venture capital for cross-border innovation. It is with tremendous pleasure and honor to gather so many of you from around the world and to have two speakers representing the East and West brand and supply chain, and perhaps Yin and Yang. We're going to talk about the future of mobility. In the auto and EV startup industry, our two speakers almost do not need introductions. Gita, originally from India with a PhD in biotech from Cambridge, then became an investor for a multi-billion family office before co-founding Fisker and became the CFO of the company. I truly believe that you are instrumental in Fisker's success, especially with the supply chain and capital market strategy. Would you like to say hi to our audience? Thank you, Elisa. It's a pleasure to be here. Really excited to be here today. Fantastic. And Jack, on the other hand, is a real veteran in the auto industry. You are the CEO of MIH, an open EV platform initiated and supported by Foxconn and also the co-founder of NEO. In addition to many other executive positions that you held before, such as the former chairman of Fiat in China. Jack, such a busy and exciting week for you with Foxconn just unveiled three EVs. How are you holding up? And would you like to say hi to our friends online as well? Thank you, Alyssa. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jita. Uh, it's a pleasure to have a chance to have a conversation. Uh, so uh, let's uh, stay tuned. Awesome. We're going to have a fun and interactive, interactive session. And as mentioned, I'm really excited about bringing you two together on the same stage. We have all seen exciting news about the collaboration between Fisker and Foxconn, while MIH is the platform to enable the next generation of EV development at Foxconn and many other places, I hope. Some of the international audience online may not be very familiar with MIH yet, while some of the Asian audience might be very curious about Fisker. So before we get into further discussion, Gita and Jack, can I invite you to introduce each other so that we can hear from your perspectives why MIH and Fisker are brilliant in their respective ways. Gita, why don't we start with you? Well, you know, let me, let me talk a little bit about our philosophy at Fisker. So Fisker believes in a fundamental asset light model where we believe we do what we know best and we partner with partners who know what they do best. So when we were talking about developing an affordable high volume vehicle, and I know Jack and I share a passion in bringing affordable electric vehicles to the market. And we were thinking about what would we do differently? We thought about who would be our partner for this disruptive vehicle, which one day could become a mass market vehicle all over the world. We could not think of a better partner than Foxconn, why? because Foxconn brought the world's most innovative product to market. When nobody knew how to develop a phone without buttons, Foxconn found ways to manufacture this revolutionary product. So for us, we wanted a partner who could think differently, innovatively in new ways on how to make this exciting product. And um, that's where we think Foxconn is our perfect partner. That's fantastic. And maybe before we get to you, Jack, just like maybe one more thing, you know, like people often confuse about Foxconn and MIH. Uh, for Gita, with your understanding, with MIH, this open EV platform, what does it do? Why, why is it so special uh, for those of, you know, the audience that, you know, like are not so familiar with that yet? 
Yeah, let me let me talk a little bit about the car world. I think it's quite difficult if you're not in the car world to understand what it takes to develop a car. A car has 4,000 parts and you need a complex supply chain. In the old world, when you had the gasoline engine, of course, car companies pioneered how to develop an engine with electric batteries, motors that are very sturdy. You have a lot of parts that go away and you have a new way of developing cars. Now, development usually takes five years. It's expensive. You need world homologation. It's complicated. And what we believe in Fisker, we believe in something called platform sharing. And that's what the M1H platform is all about. It's about platform sharing. And why is platform sharing good? The reason why platform sharing is good is you can share certain parts. You can lower the overall cost. You can share supply chain. You can be faster in adopting technology. And you can have multiple customers or multiple vehicles on one unique underpinning, and you can have multiple brands, multiple designs on the same platform. Now at Fisker, we pioneer something called FFPAD. It stands for Fisker Flexible Platform Adaptive Design, where we are able to take a platform and we are able to use it over multiple vehicles, saving costs, sharing parts, having economies of scale, and really bringing efficiency into vehicle development. I love that. And you know, like, I think you were right on with this open platform and this philosophy with MIH, which makes them a really, really special, I think, you know, like new generation of uh, new ways of making vehicles. And Jack, your turn. You know, with the movement, with these new waves of EV startups um, in the US, China, Europe, and all over the world, why is Fisker so exciting to work with? Okay, thank you, Alyssa. Let me uh, uh, get a little bit of uh, introduction uh, for Gita, and then I can do it for myself. Um, my understanding of Gita is, uh, as you say, uh, from Asia. Uh, we're all Asia, but she's now in the West. I'm in the East still. Um, for uh, our favorite thing, I think car, basically we all love the car and now becoming mobility. That's why we call MIH a mobility in harmony. I will explain later, but uh, the third important uh, characteristic is I think Gita and Hendrik, they are all entrepreneur. They start from scratch, scratch. They want to make things creative and also they do what they like. And my understanding, the last one is we're all international citizens. So we travel around the world and then we reside uh, where we think will be make a better life for ourselves. So that's my understanding about Gita, uh, in addition to her PhD and biotech, whatever you say, but the most important thing is that I think Gita is a people person. The first time when I talked to her, we're, we're just chit-chatting about the life and then also talk about what we can do together. So uh, rather than that, I think uh, MIH, if I can introduce for myself, is that uh, this is a platform that I always want to bring a lot of people, uh, developers working together and doing two folds. One, to reduce the development lead time of the next generation EV. The second thing, uh, as Gita just say, we can reduce a whole bunch of a complexity in terms of the cost because all the OEM or the car manufacturer before, traditionally they are a closed loop. And we try in my career many times trying to put a common platform together, but it's a very big challenge. So if we have a chance to do it at MIH, we should collect an open platform, developer, do everything together, collaborate, and make sure our next generation EV a splash. Fantastic. And I do echo your sentiment. When I first learned about Fisker, I was like, wow, what an incredible combo. You know, a legendary designer, coupled with Gita's really expertise in the capital markets and also strategies with the supply chain. I think it's no wonder they are where they are today. And I want to get into a little bit further with what Gita has already mentioned, 
with the asset light business model. I think Fisker really took the brand and supply chain collaboration to a different level because what we are seeing right now is that there are still some EV startups, you know, like trying to build their own factories. Some failed already. Some are still trying. But I think, you know, like for Fisker, from the very beginning, you were very clear in terms of your vision and your strategy. However, I think there are also many interesting nuances that you actually kind of like build in to contribute to your success so far. So Gita, can you share a little bit with us, you know, like with this asset light business model, um, a little bit further with your philosophy and also the elements that you actually put in so that you are not just, you know, like hiring Fosker. Uh, Foxconn to make cars. You are not just kind of like um, outsourcing car making to them. I think this is really a new model. So can you share a little bit further around that? Sure. So, you know, Lisa, car, the car business is a very, very complicated business. Not only you have multiple parts, the cars need to be homologated, regulated, safety, because we put people in them. People do all kinds of things. They drive, drive them in hot cold, rainy weather, people sleep in cars. So we need to make safe cars. This is such a complicated business. Not only is it a complicated business, you need to make a product that people want to buy, that people like. So uh, now add on top of that, the complexity of capital. This is not a 10 million, 100 million. This is a multi-billion dollar business. So you add all of these together, the highest barrier to entry is the car business. And I commend, by the way, Jack for his career. He has such an enviable career. So when I look at Jack's career, he is a 30 year veteran and he has navigated both the traditional auto business and he has had the opportunity to be a founder of NEO and being part of the team that took NEO public in 2018. Once in a lifetime opportunity to, to learn both these worlds. And when you navigate and you have this enviable experience that Jack has, you understand these complexities. You understand what risks lie for startups. You understand what opportunities lie for someone in Jack's role where he's chief executive officer of the M1H consortium and what opportunities lie to partner with Fisker. So we decided that we will focus on things like design. We will focus on user experience. We will focus on our direct to customer sales and marketing strategy. We will focus on certain attributes that are most critical to the customer. And then we partner in areas where we feel you bring a partnership to the table. Now, because the industry is so complex, this is not just a service provider or a contract manufacturer. You truly partner because you're bringing innovation in how you make the car. You're reducing the number of hours to put to put, assemble the car. You might bring some technology innovation into the car. So this this is not this is this cannot be if it's not a partnership. It has to be a partnership. You have to have the same mentality to bring such a revolutionary product to market. So we feel that we have found an ideal partner in Foxconn in the development of pro pro Project Pair and manufacturing of Project Pair. Well, I obviously also believe in that as well. And I think, you know, like as you mentioned earlier when we were chatting that for technology, you know, like the product cycle is actually, you know, with if we were to look at iPhones versus cars, now, you know, unless we have a new model of collaboration, otherwise there's just no way for us to catch up with what the world um, needs in terms of, you know, like uh, what we need to deliver for our consumers. And I, I think for Jack, you know, this week, in addition to three exciting new EVs model, Model C, Model E, and Model T, you also announced very exciting partnership with Microsoft Arms and also Train Michael for, for software, for cloud, for uh, cyber securities. And I want to switch gear a little bit to talk about, you know, with car manufacturing, we used to think of hardware, but then now we are moving into more of a software design um, platform and probably even more so UX design. You know, like I feel like for myself or for the next generation of EV consumers, we're not just buying a car, we're really looking for a connection. So, first of all, I would like to uh, hear from Jack in terms of your software design, um, define, and also UX define kind of vehicle, how does MIH enable that? And afterwards, I, I would love to also hear from, from Gita in terms of how you connect with the next generation 
of EV consumers. So Jake. Let me give it a try on uh, what I have done for NEO and our previous uh, engagement with the customer and the uh, uh, user. You need to have a very strong and bond with the customer and make sure from the user scenario, whether you will be able to offer the best, then uh, and put it back to the industrialization and technology side of it and see whether you can match it. Uh, a little bit of a different approach by the traditional guy is that here are the technology, here are the best in class, here are the quality and so on and so on. Take it or leave it, you know. To, so the customer was like, all right, if I have a chance to choose, I would like to see whether there is a chance that we make sure that our cost, our, our quality and so on is balanced. So you always get a compromised product. From that sense, I think when uh, Neo and then now Fisker is doing really is trying to make sure that the best, all of the best that the customer will be attached to uh, with a direct manufacturing and also the technology. So in our uh, sense in MIH really is trying to achieve those scenario to the customer to our best effort. So either it's a solution or components or anything that a platform can offer, we want to make sure that people really love it and they have a chance to uh, improve from time to time. So OTA and, and the software design uh, defined become such an important characteristics. And we have a chance in this chance is the EVs coming in, the smart mobility coming in, because uh, less components on the EV platform and also the fast reaction time and, and all the technologies coming in with uh, this platform, uh, I think we will be able to offer to our first uh, partnership that Fiskars had with MIH and Foscon really bring them to the best. Uh, what I want to say last is really um, in terms of what we can do together is the trust. There's nothing else but trust in the partnership, as Gita just said. When you say it's a partnership, there, there will be always an argument, you know, there will be, you know, you know, in, in terms of discussion, what we can do, but sometimes people have different ideas. But we want to put a common ground together and move forward quicker. Uh, normally in the traditional way, it takes years and years, and because the board of director of a board of bureaucracy is taking years long to make sure a program is running. For us, I think Gita is making the call with Hendrik. From our side, Foscon is a fast mover. So we just need to have a people talking. We don't need to have a board talking. That's what is different from the others. Yeah, and speaking of speed, I think MIH just celebrated, if I remember correctly, pretty much almost just only just one year anniversary, uh, just past that, not too long ago. So, so basically with 2000 members, you have attracted already talking about speed. I think this is really a good demonstration. And, and Gita, can you also share a little bit in terms of with this exciting from ocean, from pair, you know, like how do you actually position yourself to really attract the next generation of EV consumers? Great question, Elisa. So, you know, when, when we grew up, or at least I grew up, the, the choice of the car was about gear shift, the sound of the engine. Those were some of the drivers for you, you know, uh, efficiency, fuel efficiency. If you look today, those things are gone. Today's buyers, they are motivated by completely different things. The iPhone, truly the cell phone changed our life. It changed the way we think. With the way we now buy our media, the way we look at entertainment, everything's changed the way we consume the car. So today's buyers, they look at what kind of a screen do I have? Can I stream music? What content can I stream in the car? What, how can I, what is the user experience? How many buttons do I need to click? to even change the temperature in the car. So, so, the, so, the, so car development changes the way the consumer is using the vehicle. 
sound that's become sound 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 detections become really critical so when we are developing program pair we're thinking about technology we're thinking about the users of the iphone we're thinking about how you buy media at home on your television and how customers want to use the vehicle and this is what is different today because you don't have the sound of the engine you don't have the gear shift and the vehicle is truly technology on wheels. And this is where Foxconn and Fisker believe that this is the future, the way we deliver this seamless customer experience. So we actually have a team of UI UX developers in-house, and they don't even come from the car world. They come from the technology world where they've developed a, a, an experience on a cell phone or on the television or from the gaming industry where uh, they really truly understand what the next gen customer wants. I think the key word I'm hearing here is really seamless. You know, like I think from the moment that you step into your car or even before that, from buying your car, your insurance and everything, how can we really make this customer journey truly seamless? And when you mentioned pair, I couldn't help but notice there, there seems to be a pair behind you uh, on the painting. <laughs> So that's, that's that's amazing, and you know, like with that for for Jack, you know, like I hear you before, um, you know, like with basically transforming the car space into your second living room, and I think that really echo what Gita just mentioned as well. The Model E, if I remember correctly, that Foxconn just unveiled, I think has also that aspiration. Can you share a little bit in terms of your vision? around that with you know, like UI UX and also transforming the car uh, to really integrate the vehicles with human beings life. We'd love to actually hear your, your philosophy around that. Yeah, I think uh, the second living room as a word that invented is really giving some people uh, a little bit of a refreshing idea after the uh, quarantine and also uh, this pandemic issue, if I can qualify people sitting in a second living room in a car and qualify for the 14 days that we have to be locked in the home, I think it would be a, a better choice. But having said that, um, our behavior as our uh, basic living in home should be transformed when we go out. Otherwise, the mobility will be only a little fraction of our life. But when you have the mobility becoming part of your living room, you actually have the whole nine yards and then you can experience different things. And when you drive or you are being driven, that in the car, that environment give you a totally different spect perspective of, the, uh, of your life. I think that's important. And when we said we can do that, we can bring all the technology to our customer saying whatever you can do in your so in your couch you can do it in the in the passenger seat okay or in the driver's seat when there is an autonomous vehicle available so these are the things that uh, prompt me to really generate technology to fit that so that gener that generation of a technology can come from when your eye is seeing the carpet or your hand without touching the screen that we can do the gesture control or in your hearing and voice control you don't want to touch anything anymore uh, in the instrumentation you do it or the last but not the, the least the lady's favorite if i have the fragrance in the car and i can call it out by voice it will be fantastic uh, Levendale. Smell. If you want today, I said lavender for me, and then the jar underneath the console pop up with the smell. So these are the things about what we can do in home that can be transferred to the second living room in car. Wow, you know, it seems like with that, I, I can only imagine our digital life surrounded by the six senses to get more and more splendid. That's, that's truly amazing. Before we move on for Gita, one more thing. I'm very curious. I, I got what you both said. You know, I fully hope that we can actually get there one day very soon. But you know, like how come we are not seeing this 
from the traditional and existing sort of like OEM and big automakers? How come we are seeing these new waves of startups? And it seems like it is the startups that's driving a lot of these changes and driving a lot of this innovation. Even on the manufacturing side, we're seeing Foxconn now stepping into the space. Why do you think that's the case? Well, first of all, uh, um, Elisa, the existing car industry is a very uh, established industry. It's a hundred year old industry. They've spent not billions, trillions of dollars over the last hundred years establishing brands, supply chain, uh, and the skill set that resides in existing automakers, it pioneered around the development of an efficient gasoline engine. Now, if you're moving away from the gasoline engine to batteries and motors, which are tradition, which today are made by supply chain. And as you know, Asia is leading in batteries. Now, certainly there is an opportunity for startups. Not only that, let me give you a very interesting example we generally say. So if Elisa, tomorrow you decide to become vegan and you want to, you, you really want to get a vegan burger you are not going to McDonald's. You are going, you are going to go to a brand that represents vegan. And this is what we see with the customer base. When customers are thinking of electric, it's easier for them to position themselves with a brand that represents pure EV, that truly makes a statement that this is an electric car. So I think it's a very unique moment in history that startups have truly the chance to develop a product where we can go from ground up. I think existing car makers will ultimately get there, but they will have to sacrifice revenues. They will have to convert factories. They will have to bring in skill sets to be able to get to the, get to the stage. I think this is a great place for customers to be. It creates competition. It creates exciting products. And I think it's a phenomenal chance for startups like Fisker to enter into a space where we normally wouldn't be able to enter into. Fantastic. At least now I know where you're not getting your vegan burgers. And, you know, like I, I think with startups, I'm, you know, I'm seeing basically, I think maybe for the existing players, there's really this innovation dilemma, you know, like they, they basically now with their original existing success, how do they really enter the next sort of like generation? But that also brought another question for me for startups, like, Fisker, obviously you are very established already, you know, like when public and so on and so forth, with MIH with such great leadership. However, compared with existing the big guys, how do you attract talent? How do you compete with them to bring the right people? Because it's all about people at the end of the day, as you mentioned with your team, with, with UI UX designers, you know, like now it seems like we're not only competing against the automakers, but also the technology the tech giants, how do you do that? Maybe uh, very quickly, Jack, would you like to also first tell us how you build a team at MIH and what, what, what do you believe in? First of all, I don't want to do the Q&A with you anymore. I want to cut in, all right? Uh, so, so, so my, my take is that uh, um, for Gita and I, we can have a, a more of a face-to-face -face conversation, um, basically, uh, we uh, should uh, think uh, about our, our uh, future generation. Can somebody mute, please? Okay. Um, for our future generation, I think uh, uh, we should be thinking what we can do as a new company and give them the freedom of thinking and create all the environment for them to pop up their idea. Uh, for us, it's not only wearing a t-shirt or a jean, it's about the culture. What we have seen in the traditional OEM is the culture change and the paradigm shift is a great challenge for them, uh, the infrastructure and also the way they develop car, it won't be happening in the next five years, they will be able to catch up with the new guy because when you do the testing, you do uh, one at a time and then you finish all this gateway and you do, do, do the next. In the new way of doing business, we look at the user experience and all the technology kits, they are coming in from a customer perspective. 
So if we set a time to do that in two years, rather than three to four years of a car development, we do that and then we overlapping the testing. And if there's an 80% confidence, uh, you go to the next gate rather than, you know, you have to complete 100% and then, you know, trying to juggle around it. The second thing is you always try everything on simulation. Uh, and the simulation give you a perspective of what's going to happen uh, to our not only technology side of it, but also foreseeing what customer will be reacting to. So we can bring the customer to the simulation room and make sure they are totally satisfied when we make this, uh, you know, parallel. So there's a lot of things that I experienced in uh, my previous engagement. And the last but not the least is really uh, the customer and also the, the real end designer um, really talking in a, a very flat organizational way. In terms of our supply chains, the same thing, the supply chain, there is always a transparency, the tier one to tier four. So you don't really waste time communicating between the layers, but you do this one and flatter organization discussion. So you don't miss out your chips is eventually that, uh, you know, recently evidently that everybody is, uh, you know, shortage on. So I think there's a lot of things that we are organizing industry wise and for Fisker, uh, we can, look at them and see what they really want and then we match with it. I think that's the, the beauty of it. I, I'm hearing quite a few keywords. So culture is definitely a huge thing to give yeah. them this really freedom of thinking. Although I still do like the t-shirts and I, I do think that you have great t-shirts over there. I hope to get well, one. Well, the culture thing, uh, this is still my Neo t-shirt. You know, <laughs> it's very simple, but it's, it's just with a line as I think the design uh, expert like Fisker, they will love it. It's, everything is simple. You don't want the complex, complicated thing, but you do want to have a uh, appearance that can attract the new generation to appear for. Yeah, and also another really key important point that I'm hearing that I like a lot is this transparency and very flat sort of like organization. So well, I like uh, the outfit of uh, Gita. You know? She, she is actually synchronized with me. I have this uh, you know, one line here. She's got this dot, beautiful. So yeah, so Gita, how about you? How do you build your team over there at Fisker? So Elisa, I think globally um, governments have accepted and people have accepted that electrification is the future. I think we all agree that the future will be electric and I think now the question is how fast? And people want to get on this train. They want to be part of this disruption. They want to be part of this growth. And from our point of view, I think everything Jack said, this flat mentality, this ability to make decisions fast, no bureaucracy, to be part of developing a vehicle and a revolutionary vehicle and to be part of a vehicle launch it is truly a very unique experience. And there is pride, by the way, there is pride in being part of this team. So what we see is that we tend to attract people who don't wanna miss out on this train, who wanna be part of a car launch, who want to learn new technology, who wanna have the ability to bring out their ideas. And of course, you know, we have a vision, which is a cleaner future for all and a mission to develop the world's most sustainable and emotion stirring vehicles. And I think when you have a vision and mission of that stature, people want to be part of that. And at the same time, we are a multicultural company. We attract talent. We're a global company. We attract talent from all over the world. And I think um, people want to be part of this, uh, this amazing disruptive space. Yeah, that pride. Totally agree with that. And, you know, like I want to be part of that movement, that revolution as well. And, you know, like coming back to today's topic, East meets West. So I'm, I'm curious, you know, like in the EV world for the next generation, what do you think the East and West bring to the table respectively in terms of, you know, like either philosophy, idea, design? We'd love to actually hear from you. And both of you are very international, even though, you know, it seems like now Jack is mainly in Asia, 
Gita is mainly in the States, but then you both have very multinational and multicultural upbringings and experience. So I think you know, like you two would be perfect to share your observations around this. Jake, uh, why would you- Let me shoot up, let me shoot up. Uh, I, I think uh, with my age, I've been through all the civilization from the, the Western world uh, and then back to Asia. Uh, particular, I've been uh, spending a lot of time in uh, China and Taiwan that I can see that uh, the culture here is not only what you say about yin and yang, is actually accommodating. We accommodating things and we never invade other people. We want to be uh, very harmony as what we say in MIH, mobility and harmony. The harmony is something it's very difficult to achieve. Sometimes, you know, people, for instance, the consortium, there are different partners. They're coming in to a different angle. They argue about why the design has to be this way and that way. Uh, we want to harmonize those ideas and really create a platform for them to have a debate, but find a common ground and really differentiate from uh, the other end. And that design, will be really presented to uh, the, the end customer in a way that people have a choice to do that. Uh, so I think from a, a culture and also from a philosophy point of view, for particular in Asia, we accommodate. And for the Western world, I think I'll leave it to uh, Gita, but Western from my point, point of view is more uh, sometimes confronting and and make the best debate and get the best result and very, very good, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the, the debate that you can create some idea. So it's different, but I would be able to uh, combine that from this part of the world with that part of the world in some kind of a harmony. Harmony and harmless partners. That's what I'm hearing for basically partners like Foxconn in Asia. How yeah. about how about perspectives and value that the West can add for the future of mobility, Gita? So Elisa, first of all, by the way, the sun is setting now in, in so you see a lot of sun on oh, my face beautiful. while the sun is while the sun is rising where you are. So you know, at the end of the day. Um, you know, there is a harmony between East and West. And, you know, when I specifically, for, let me break it up, first of all, uh, into our company, Fisker, Eats Me West, and then let me talk a little bit about the global, the macroeconomics. So I think from a macroeconomics perspective, you know, US is very much driven by customer. If the customers decided, hey, I'm going to go after this product, that's where ultimately the market will be. And the switch happens pretty fast, pretty fast. Now, when it comes to Europe, Europe has decided they will use regulation. So they are going to ban uh, uh, gasoline cars or diesel cars by certain dates. And this is how they are introducing. Now, it's interesting in China or Asia, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Western car companies had mastered the a, a, a combustion engine and you see all the car joint ventures in China. Now, in the meantime, when the whole EV revolution came about, this was a unique opportunity for China to establish its stake in the ground that, hey, we can be leaders in the EV space. And I think these are these three big phenomena that are having, happening, but ultimately this is the biggest industry in the world. We sell a hundred million vehicles worldwide. So it's East means West, but ultimately the benefit is to the customer, right? We will create an amazing product. Now within Fisker, we are a multicultural company. We have people who come from all over the world. I, of course, you know, grew born in India, studied in Europe, live in the United States. So I think globally, like Jack does, I know Jack's done business in all over the world. And that's what makes our companies unique. We bring the multidisciplinary, the multicultural knowledge and the ability to navigate through different cultures to ultimately make partnerships. So we're a global company. We're making products for a global customer. We respect global cultures and we try to bring the best of all the worlds ultimately to benefit the customer. I think that uh, I want to add to uh, Gita your point that 
as a global company, you do have a presence in the con different continents. So when you seeing your sunset here, that actually the other side is already uh, have the sunrise. Uh, when you do your design from California and you put your idea and the other side of the world uh, in terms of uh, uh, here in Asia will be able to execute for you in eight or nine hours time, depends on the summer or winter. Uh, after that, then I can ship it to Europe for actually having the stylish, the styling actually could be done in our studio in European office. So this 24 seven things actually makes three times more efficient than the previous guy. Definitely. And I'm hearing basically US market, very consumer driven while the consumers there are extremely sensitive um, about the mission in terms of their connection with the car, even with the concept and the philosophy of the company. Europe, very regulation driven. And with China, really a lot of potential and Asia overall, a lot of potential. And also what I'm hearing from both Jack and Gita is that this whole EV experience is becoming this almost kind of like new universal language. Doesn't matter whether you are from the East or West, once you try it, you're gonna be in love with it, you know, like no song, you can just kind of like really enjoy this new space, new experience. And we are going to open up for Q&A a little bit before I get into the last question. So I just want to encourage our audience to post their questions online. And since we started the session with you two introducing each other, I also want to end in the end, after I ask my last question, one question you want to ask each other. So I only also want to prep you for that. But in the meanwhile, I would love to hear for you, what are you most excited about by the end of the year and also in five years? So who would like to go first? <laughs> Lady go ahead, first. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Jack. Okay. I want to know that in the next five years, will there be a musical uh, you know, ingredient in the car uh, that you are going to uh, satisfy your customer? Because musically now we all, you know, I'm a rocker. Uh, and I want to know whether there's any choice that uh, other than the APP that we have for those uh, uh, music uh, uh, station. What kind of a music uh, and cultural thing that we can foresee? And we want our next generation to have a taste of not only looking at the computer, doing all this thing, they need to be more culturally, like the painting in the back uh, or the musical uh, uh, ingredient that they can enjoy. And Gita, next time when you meet Jack, make sure you ask him to sing life you know we, we heard him he was brilliant and he's really kind of like a rock and roll star and I, I have an idea for you actually jack maybe you should develop like a moving concert so with the car you know like someone like you you can just sing along the way and then you know provide some sort of entertainment and maybe stream live stream i can give you my digital twin then you can uh, do whatever you want yeah. exactly but you know before we get to Gita. by the end of the year i know you have a lot of exciting plans coming up even maybe some um upcoming trips and, and so on and so forth. Before the end of the year, tell us something that you're excited about with MIH or you know related to Foxconn. I think uh, we will be able to bring a lot of young kids uh, and uh, hop on to this car that uh, we, just, we just saw and uh, bring, the, bring us more idea. So I think we will have some forum for people around the world to be able to hop on to the MIH platform and play with it, not just work play with it. So that's my end years uh, ago. Great. And I have seen your office space. Definitely, um, you know, seems like very ambitious plan to add a lot of people. Very excited about that. Yes. Rakita, how about you? So Elisa, before the end of the year on uh, November 17th, we will be showing Fisker Ocean at the LA Auto Show. It's our production intent vehicle. And I'm truly excited. It is a beautiful vehicle. I've seen it in development and I'm really excited that we can share it with the rest of the world. Uh, it's a lot of hard work. A lot of put, people have put in a ton of hard work. So very excited. And then you asked, uh, what do I look forward to over five years? So it takes us to the end of 2026. So 
obviously the launch of uh, fiscal ocean next year as we start delivering vehicles to the car is critical but we will bring four vehicles to market in in five years that will be millions of uh, vehicles on the road uh, globally certified so we'll be in multiple countries but i tell you what really makes me excited so pair that you see behind me stands for personal electric automotive revolution and when i saw hendrick's vision on the design and i see our partnership with foxconn i truly see that this is the future of a golf in the making and if uh, i'm sure jack you remember there's a few vehicles that have crossed a million units a year in sales and i truly think that this is such a revolutionary vehicle it will change lives of people it will bring bring people joy and i can't wait for that moment that we bring this partnership to fruition in doing that you got uh, it looking forward to that as well in addition to the pair behind you i also see ocean so great combination great painting behind you and before we move into the audience q a what questions do you have for each other well go ahead jack <laughs> well, What's your next uh, vacation uh, period uh, uh, during Christmas, or are you are gonna work twenty four seven? So, 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 Jack, I uh, well, the likelihood that I'll work twenty four seven is very high, but I think uh, this year Henrik and I decided we will have all our families over for Christmas. So I'm looking forward to spending Christmas with a very, very extended family and cooking for three days in a row. Oh. <laughs> wow. Thank you so, for so Jack, I have a question yeah. about the dog that I see in all the photos. Oh, <laughs> that's a terrier mutt that I had. She passed away a couple of years ago, but we have three dogs. We have a bottle collie. Uh, she passed away as well. So our last one is a poodle. She's still in Shanghai. Or we just ask our friend to take care of it. So, you know, I, in Chinese, I'm also a dog, uh, you know, I, I love dogs and they are just like friends and they're part of the family. Thank you for asking me. So Jack, I have to give you an interesting feature in the ocean. And yes. the interesting feature in the ocean is that the rare window goes down, which is very unusual. And it's a great space for dogs to put their face out and oh. breathe fresh air. Wow, oh, fantastic. That. I think uh, I think uh, my three dogs will like to put pictures on. Uh, That's I hope, they could, I hope they could be still with me, uh, uh, two of them. But uh, when they pass away, I was really sad. Really, um, I want to memorize those, uh, uh, you know, picture. If that idea of putting in the real window for memorizing our pets, it would be fantastic. So two pictures and one dog coming out from the Fisker pear rare window. I think oh. that image is a perfect ending for the formal session of this. We have about 10 minutes for Q and A. And first of all, I'm actually seeing some questions, even when we are getting the RSVP, quite a lot of questions about the regional place for both Fisker and MIH or, or Foxconn, particularly, I guess, you know, like uh, maybe not, not specifically to each company or platform, but in Asia, specifically, I'm seeing quite a bit of questions about India. And I guess, you know, given Gita's uh, background, obviously, I think uh, I also have seen some um, news and articles about potential plans or existing plans with Fisker in India already, obviously a huge market over there, but it seems like there's still a lot of potential around there. And with Foxconn or maybe MIH, I know that there's probably also some upcoming plans. So can you comment a little bit around that? And also, uh, not only with Asia, but also with US and also Europe. This week, a lot of people are asking the chairman of Foxconn about the plans in Europe with the factory. I know we probably will not be able to talk much about that, but just in general, regional plans, what do you believe in? What do you see? Why don't we start with Gita? I really, I really want to go uh, to India. Uh, you know, I've been there many times, but I think I miss India a lot. I need to have some curry. <laughs> Uh, Jack, you can come to my kitchen for that. 
So, so I think our partnership with Foxconn, first of all, Elisa is global. It's not a regional partnership. And uh, we are starting here in the United States as uh, both companies have announced. And of course we have plans to go into Europe, China and India. Now saying that uh, automotive production has to be local since this is a very high volume vehicle. Uh, we do not want to ship cars because the, the, the price point cannot afford logistics. We will start at under $30,000. And of course, it will be able to be optioned up. But US is the first market. And as we all know, China or Asia is the biggest, will become or is the biggest EV market. So of course, I think India is on the cards. However, it will have to wait for the market to mature a little bit not just from a consumer perspective, but also from a supply chain perspective, because for this product, for pair product to be successful, we do need to localize it from a cost perspective. Yeah, yeah. And, and as far as what uh, Liz are saying for Europe, I have no uh, comments on that <laughs> yet. Um, but uh, all I have to say is that as an open platform, you go around the world, Europe is one of the top uh, uh, EV market it started from Norway, Scandinavia, and then it's going to come down to Germany and then to Italy, Spain. So it's going to spread around quickly, uh, particularly in the 2030, 2040 kind of a, a termination of the internal combustion engine. So what we can say is that uh, there's a partnership being striked uh in europe uh, because uh, in us we have fisker as a partner uh, and uh, also uh, in lordstown but in uh in china and also in asia it's our, our base camp europe is somewhere that we need to explore and i think it'll be soon the chairman Liu will announce uh, whatever is going to happen and I guess I, I wanted to ask you where you are traveling to next, but you probably will not tell me the designation. So I'm not going to ask that. We also see questions around because we haven't really been very technical today with the questions and discussion, but we're seeing also um, questions around battery technology. So people are very curious in terms of pair, in terms of maybe MIH, um, you know, like in general, what's your take and what are you going to use when it comes to batteries? And then with MIH, also another question related to that is, are you going to be involved with battery recycling, you know, with carbon emission and, and so on and so forth? Yeah. Um, I think that I can uh, just start with uh, three kind of a battery technology, LPF and uh, lithium, and then eventually solid state. Uh, these are the area that uh, our industrial guys are really exploring. Uh, what we can also envisage is in the near term that uh, lithium still the mainstream. If there is a cost solution that we have to do is LPF. But all in all, we need to satisfy what customer is expecting in terms of the mileage, uh, particular uh, in the charging station that we're going to do. So in our MIH working group, we do have energy uh, storage system uh, group that will be working together and try to find a solution for that. Uh, in addition, that we also track the green energy to make sure our future carbon neutral is in the equation. Thank you, Jack. Gita, anything to add around that? Yeah, Elisa, I think, you know, Jack mentioned there are three main, uh, or at least in the commercial arena today, is LFP or uh, 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 nickel is obviously the metal of choice or uh, NMC, is some companies use NCA. So I think from in a high volume product, you don't wanna take risk on chemistry or battery technology uh, because you need to be safe. So uh, we are obviously working together with Foxconn on a battery solution. Uh, we also need to make sure that the price point can afford clearly um, uh, the batteries. I think as we look at better materials, better packaging, better pack technologies, the efficiency will improve, we'll get better range. Of course, there's a charging infrastructure that comes into play as well. As charging infrastructure improves, you at some point have diminishing returns. You don't need to carry a big battery pack because it's weight, cost, everything else. Then your topic on recycling, I think uh, the bat uh, uh, Tesla, uh, has shown that batteries do last a fairly long time, especially because uh, we don't abuse a car battery like we abuse our phone battery. We never let it go down to zero, right? So I think that 
uh, uh, batteries will last 200, 250,000 or 300,000 miles, depending on how big the pack is. And we all are thinking about reuse, recycling, what can we do? What is end of life? It is part of every OEM, uh, whether you can uh, take certain components out, whether you, you can use them for home storage. So that's just the DNA of every, every company and every battery um, uh, operated vehicle. Yeah, in our uh, energy storage uh, team that we do think there, uh, if the five years plus three kind of a uh, uh, battery life cycle, the last three years, if this come down to a percentage that is only for storage, we can put into a charging station and make sure those storage can download the electricity during the night at the low cost, and then, you know, discharge them in the daytime. So there is a, a price advantage that we can do that. So these are the things that we can think about. Fantastic. One last question, because we do have a hard stop in two minutes. So um, I see questions around, can startups get funding from MIH? And I suppose, you know, like maybe with Fisker, now you are public. Is there also plans to work with startups with corporate innovation, corporate venturing, you know, like basically being this breeding ground with other potential unicorns? So maybe Jack, let's start with you. Well, I think we becoming like an incubator for those new guys. And uh, I do see the diamond in the rough right now. Um, I can pop it up and then really go into the capital market and uh, try to help them, not just trying to put the money into them. It's trying to help them with our industrial strategy team and make sure they can make the next move quicker. Elisa, uh, from Fiscus perspective, uh, we recently announced an investment. We made a $10 million investment in a European charging uh, network called Allego. They are the largest uh, 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 charging network in Europe in terms of uh, DC DC fast charging. So as a company, we are uh, looking at making investments in technologies that improve our customer experience or improve the technology within the vehicle. And we are open to looking at technologies all over the world. And like Jack mentioned, we also look at uh, uh, companies where we can pro provide mentorship and we can help them to become uh, 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 leaders. That's great. And with that, I'm really just beyond thankful and also honored to have both of you with us at this session. And with all of this discussion, I hope that this is really just the beginning of a lot more conversations to come and also a lot more collaborations between you two and also with a lot of other industry partners, startups, talents, and so on and so forth. And I hope that one day we will be able to be at the same place, drinking, maybe having a vegan burger, drinking some beers, and also hearing Jack sing with his rock and roll. So with that, I want to thank you both again and also thank all of our engaging audience online. What a great crowd, by the way. And I hope to see you again all very, very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.